The digital RAM is a special memory symbol that can store input values and recall them even after the processor has been rebooted. To get a digital RAM into your program, click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key D RAM as in dog RAM, and hit enter. Alternatively, you can expand the logic symbols folder and then expand the memory folder under that, and then click and drag the digital RAM over to the detail view. The digital RAM symbol has five main components. The store input allows data coming into the digital RAM to be saved on the processor. The recall input allows data to be loaded from the processor. And an expandable number of input lines represent digital data that is being stored. The same number of outputs represent digital data that is being loaded. And finally, the expandable number of select inputs are similar to individual storage units where data can be saved. So with that in mind, let's put together a quick sample program. In the common configuration, the store and recall inputs are both set to 1, and each input and output pair have the same name. I'm going to drive the select inputs of the digital RAM with an interlock toggle, and the interlock toggle will be driven with output from an X panel. The digital data being stored on the processor will come from individual toggle symbols. To avoid any input jamming, the toggle outputs will be fed to the digital RAM through a buffer. The toggle symbols will be used as inputs and outputs for the digital RAM, so the values recalled from the processor will affect the state of each toggle button. The clock inputs of the toggles will be driven by the X panel. The outputs of the digital RAM will be fed into a multiple one-shot, and the outputs of the multiple one-shot will go to the set input of the toggles. And then I'm going to drag the outputs of the digital RAM into a multiple knot, and the outputs of the multiple knot will also be dragged into a multiple one-shot. Note that these two multiple one-shots could have been combined into one, but I split them apart for the sake of clarity. The outputs of this multiple one-shot will feed the reset inputs of the toggles. Doing this ensures that if the stored value is high, its corresponding toggle will be set high, and if the stored value is low, then the toggle will be reset to low. And that's it. It's a little confusing, it's a little bit big, but that's okay. It'll help get the point across once we get to the demonstration phase of the sample program. So now that it's done, let's go ahead and compile and upload to the processor. With the program running, let's take a look at how the digital RAM works. The first thing you'll notice is that the store and recall inputs are both one as we specified, and if we click through each of the select inputs, you'll notice that each input-output pair is zero. To store data on the processor, all we have to do is modify one of the input-output pairs for one of the select inputs. So if I press select input one, and set inputs two and three high, these values will be stored under select one until I change them or until something catastrophic happens to the processor. This same thing can be done for any of the other selects, so let's change a few of these at random and see what happens. And you'll notice that if I pick any of these selects that each of the values we stored is recalled immediately. The data saved under each of the select inputs is non-volatile, so resetting the processor has no effect on the stored data. Let's demonstrate that now. So even if I reset the processor, you'll notice that all of the data that we've put onto it is still stored. 